Yay, it's one of those horrible unedited YouTube videos. <laughs> You're going to have to bear with me. I obviously wasn't planning on filming anything today, as you can probably tell from just how lovely I look. But I wanted to give an update because I know that I've been taking like month to two month long breaks on this channel and stuff. And I just wanted to make sure no one ended up worrying because... I definitely haven't amassed like a ton of people here, but I've amassed enough that I'm sure at least one of you who is subscribed to me cares about how I'm doing. Basically, I started this channel when I did because it was right before a major surgery that I was going to be going through, and I was the only one in the household at the time who didn't go to a 9-to-5 job. I worked from home at the time. This was even before the panorama happened and stuff and I was working from home so I got kind of lonely. I got lonely after a while when I would just be doing art or other work in my house and no one else was there so if I had some thoughts in my head and I didn't want to bother anybody I was living with with those thoughts while they were at work I just started talking on YouTube about them and it was fun. For a long time, a majority of the length I've had this channel, I only had like 35 subscribers. And it was kind of cool because I liked, you know, talking to people, um, answering comments when I could and everything. And then around the time that the Rona hit is when I boomed a little bit and I started gaining subscribers a little bit more frequently um, and got to the number that I'm at right now, which again is absolutely tiny, microscopic, but it's big for me. It's the largest YouTube channel I've had so far my entire life, and I've been on YouTube since day one just with several different channels now. And I think it's really cool the amount of people I have. I want to entertain you. I want to be here for you guys. I want to upload videos that are interesting and are uploaded frequently, and that's the problem I'm having. I started out kind of talking about things like the gothic subculture and I was talking about things like witchcraft and paganism and everything. And those are still very integral parts of my life, despite me looking like a spud right now. I am still part of the goth subculture when I'm not in my pajamas. <laughs> and I still love the music. I love the subculture as a whole. I still am pagan. I still practice witchcraft. And it's a very important part of my life and, you know, who I am as a person every single day. But... It's gotten to a point for me now where, you know, you can only talk about that stuff for so long before you just run out of content, one, because you're just going to start rehashing your old videos over and over again. I am not someone who is able to do things like go to the goth club or to concerts because I'm chronically ill. They're not a safe environment for me. They're not an environment I can afford. They're not an environment that I can generally exist in. So I can't just sit here telling stories about, oh, that time in the goth club or that cool moment that I had at, you know, a Sisters of Mercy concert or something because unfortunately I'm just not someone who's been afforded those opportunities throughout my life. And then back in July, I finally got it. The big C. Rona hit me. It hit me hard. Um, I nearly went to the hospital. Luckily, I dodged that, thankfully. But the aftermath has not been kind to me. I've really struggled with long-haul COVID. I'm still working every day from home. I'm still doing a lot of artwork. Most of my income is still coming from my art and with that, I'm very happy. That is l literally living the dream to a lot of people. A lot of people who are artists desperately want to reach a point where one day they pay their bills through their art. And I'm very proud that I'm doing well enough with mine that I can, you know, sometimes support myself and my partner because she's got the same problem. <laughs> and it's frustrating. Um, I saw something interesting this morning, you know, slightly related to this topic, which is that a lot of doctors, apparently when they're in medical school, are explicitly told that when it comes to things like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, um, chronic Lyme disease and stuff, they're told that they're supposed to not take it seriously because a lot of doctors don't think that those are real. 
And that because of long haul COVID and COVID being a mass disabling event, they've actually discovered that they do in fact exist and that potentially a root cause of things like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome are the fact that at some point in your life, a virus really hits you hard and you have permanent aftershock from it, basically, that the rest of your life, you're going to be struggling with the aftermath of how hard that virus hits you. And it could have hit you at any time in your life and it could get progressively worse or it could kind of even itself out or it could get better. It just depends on the person. So one potentially positive thing that's come from the Rona is the fact that a lot of doctors are now waking up to the fact that, oh shit, we've been treating our patients horribly. We probably should have been taking them more seriously this entire time, but we didn't because you can't deny it, you know, that COVID's been a mass disabling event, like there's proof of it left, right, and center. People are still going to the doctor for it so frequently that a lot of doctors can't take on new patients until like next December, like December of 2023. They're bogged down, they're booked up, they can't take anybody new because of how many people need help now. And while it's great that a lot of them are starting to try to learn from this mistake and they want to rectify it and help those patients however they can. The bad thing is that they waited until it was effectively too late because one, now they have so many people who need help that they're not going to have time to help everyone. And two, they never bothered looking into this in the past, which means that they haven't allocated resources to things like this. There's not enough prescription drugs and stuff out there or treatments for people with these chronic illnesses that are an effect of having a virus at some point in their life. So what do we do with these people now? Like, we're just going to be stuck, it's going to be COVID all over again, where we're just trying to figure out what to do with thousands of sick people. But I digress. Basically, I wanted to make this video to let you know I'm basically okay, but I'm kind of changing the channel up. I want to go back to being able to post on here regularly, at least once a week or so, but I need to be able to do it in a way that is easier for me, especially on days like today where I look like this and I don't necessarily want to be on camera for two hours or something. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I have to do art every day to make money. Art is my absolute passion in life. So our spooky things. So what I'm considering starting to do is um, basically playing spooky video games, um, giving my commentary and having some fun while I'm playing those spooky video games um, with no face cam most of the time. Maybe sometimes I will, but it'll make it so that if I'm like lying down or something, I don't have to feel weird about it. Um, I'm getting a nice mic for it, and then after I'm done playing a spooky video, I'll be drawing my favorite character from them. So I know this will probably chase some people away because it's not what they subscribe for, but hopefully some of you who just like me for me will stick around for that and understand that it's just, you know, what I want to do now and what I need to do that will make keeping this channel alive a little easier for me. But that's all for now. I'll see you guys.